Hey guys, so it's March 12, 2020. Uh, it's, I don't know about you, but it's one of the, a very, very memorable day, not just to me, but I guess for the whole world. And as you saw, for those who are following the markets, we saw the markets virtually drop massively. It had to hit a circuit breaker for it to, uh, for, for trading to be halted. And I'll explain the circuit breaker later on, but uh, just a couple of things for those who are like me and uh, it's a big NBA fan. Uh, this is shocking that one of the NBA players got infected, uh, Rudy Gobert. Uh, and that's why they had to stop uh, the NBA season already. I, I think it's it's one of the first time that first times that I've seen an NBA season get suspended, and which most likely also be it will be Vince Carter's last uh, day playing NBA basketball as well. So sad news for NBA fans like me. Uh, NBA season is over, but above and beyond that. This is, I think this is one of the biggest triggers that caused markets, not just in the Philippines, but around the world. Please remember, uh, there are other cities in Southeast Asia, so other exchanges in Southeast Asia that also got hit uh, with with large selling uh, today. No, it's not just our market. It's not just us. So the large selling is something that's happening in all markets around the world as a lot of a lot of people are acting out of fear. A lot of people are panicking. A lot of people want to be uh, liquid with their cash as well. So at the, at the end of the day, uh, people have been saying, why is the market falling if uh, stocks are already cheap? When a market is bearish, when there's a lot of panic and there's a lot of fear, uh, peop- sometimes valuations are thrown out the window also because people, especially, I mentioned this in a previous video that uh when people redeem their funds, take out their funds in from mutual funds, you will you will virtually see uh, you will virtually see fund managers that they'll have to also take out and sell and liquidate their position. So when when that happens, they'll have to also sell. When they sell large amounts of people sell, you'd see the markets relatively go down as well, and it would be pushed even lower. So uh, people being liquid, people who bought earlier wanting to people who bought very 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 far. Some of them may still have profits and are taking out money. Some people are cutting loss as well. Some people are living to fight another day. But no matter how cheap the market is, when people start selling, when people act in fear, uh, markets will normally go down. And as you all know, the stock market is a forward-looking market. Uh, as the stock market is a forward-looking market, when you see people uh, act based on emotions, you see the markets go down as well. So um, this is one of the biggest drops that I've seen since the 2008 crash. I remember the 2008 crash was around 12, the biggest was around 12% on one day. But uh, the difference here is if you try to analyze it, the 2008 crash was happening in the States uh, and it really did not affect fundamental buying behavior here in the Philippines. Meaning, uh, as long as Filipinos spent their money, remittances still came in, the BPO was robust. Uh, the economy would thrive. But as you've been seeing now, a lot of businesses have been forced to either taper their operations. A lot of businesses have been forced also to somehow stop their their movements as well. That's why just to show you also, markets closed at uh, 5, 5,736. Intraday, no, the lowest was around 5,697. I'm going to show you the charts later. But this is something that's relatively... Uh, relatively strong so 616 points down on 971 9.71 percent uh down as well if you remember the previous videos that i posted also uh the the highest point that we've ever had was around 9000 and we're now at the we're now we're now below the 6000 level i remember this uh the the last time we were uh we the last time we were at this area i remember it a couple of years back, but I also remember around 2012, we were at 5.8. We closed December 2012 at 5.8. Then the market suddenly zoomed to 7.4. Then it started to retrace again because of heavy selling in 2012. Uh, and then it went back to 5.8. So whatever happened over the past uh, the, the, the past seven plus years from 2012 to 2013, then 2016, we also retraced back to where we are right now. Uh, all of those games were relatively wiped off as well so uh, i wanted to say that the main trigger still on all of this is uh, not not just the coronavirus any not just the coronavirus but fears of what the coronavirus will do fears of what 
uh, how it will affect the economy and fears on how uh, a bigger impact it will cause over the next few years still. Now let's look at the charts. So this is how the PSEI looks like. Um, just to measure also from the highest point to where we are right now, here, uh, the market relatively from the 9,000 level is now down 36.6%. So if I if you remember the previous videos that I posted, uh, the largest drop was around 50 plus percent, 2008. Now we are sitting at 36.6%. This is one of the largest drops from the peak uh, from from the time over the past over the past 10 years already. So as you can see also here. Uh, all the moving averages so far from where uh, the closing price is. So any signs of reversal as of this point in time is not pretty much uh, there. So I'll say this over and over. Uh, majority, There's a big chunk of the stocks where their fundamentals are intact. However, there will be some short-term effects also, especially uh, when we see the when we see how this affects us, especially when China's factories are still closed, uh, trade, exports, imports will virtually be hit, tourism will still will be hit, transportation will still be hit, and uh, the events, industry, conferences, expos, concerts, all of all of those uh, weddings. So when pag weddings and photographers, uh, videographers, event coordinators, caterers, it will hit a lot of people, and uh, of course weddings, uh, of course. Uh, when caterers also get hit, you have a lot of mass gatherings of Filipinos. So there's a large ripple effect in this uh, towards our economy over the short term. So I was talking to a lot of economists and what they're saying is basically this. One of the things that could somehow support this, if there's a lot of uh, construction rump ups that could possibly happen, but I don't know how could that happen if a lot of people will be forced to stay out of their house or, or won't be allowed to go out as well. So there will be there will be some impact there will be an impact on this on our economy as a whole altogether now that being said also um, a lot of people are asking what wait up what about this marvin they're already cheap uh yes they're cheap but they could still get cheaper i highly suggest that uh, you wait for consolidation you wait for until we find a base a solid base for this until we see uh, i don't know what could possibly uh, move this upward. No, it could be that an antidote is found, a cure is found, or uh, cases have started to, uh, uh, the new cases have started to dwindle down, or people who get infected, a lot of them start to get well. So uh, positive news as well. But from a charting perspective, we have to wait for a consolidation to happen. As of this point in time, there's no consolidation happening. There's no evidence of consolidation. And even if I'll show you the chart here, a uh, large candlestick, uh, volume of selling, is much higher than the average selling has been very much sustained over the past day so foreigners have still been uh going out it's it's locals buying as of this point in time but as you all know and i've said this over and over things like this normally happen when uh when when you see when you see panic and you see fear uh come in uh, when all of this is when all is said and done so sometimes even if there, there are companies that will make money off of this uh, when panic is when panic is setting in when people are fearful they will tend to react and try to preserve their cash preserve their capital as well and before I analyze the charts even even further I want to just re reiterate this that's why financial planning is so important you setting aside the cash uh, that you only put in cash that you can tolerate to drop is what's gonna hedge you and protect you to uh, to not act based on emotion that's why it's very very important also i don't know who might lose some jobs here who might lose some businesses here whose businesses might not be as good but i uh, highly suggest that if you don't have as much savings try to uh don't try to spend as much muna try to try to tighten the belt first until you see this through and for those who have emergency funds it's amazing that at least you get to use this, allow your emergency funds to be your buffer to protect you, to hedge you uh, in times like this as well. Now, let's look at the charts. Uh, so if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna plot in all of the support levels that we currently have, if you notice it here, uh, th this should have been a support level also. Uh, we've, we've mentioned this in a previous video, but it got broken down. So the technique is just to zoom out up until we see another support level. I'll try to remove the volume para hindi naman siya masyadong nakakalito. Uh, if you put it from here, you see that level, it also got broken down. Then I plotted this, I think a few days ago, it got broken, then I plotted this. So one, two, three, four support levels, 
a support level that got protected up until 2016 was pretty much broken already. Then if you add this to the mix, another shorter one, it also got broken, but you can also put this here. So uh, I'll try to zoom in lang for better context. No? So if you look at it here, support, 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 and that's what's protecting and extending the markets here. Uh, one thing one thing is for sure that this level was a, tw was a level that we hit in 2013. The market hasn't dropped this much since 2013. So seven, it was ver literally almost seven years ago already since we hit this level. And so I was in my 20s pa when, when this happened. And please remember, the drop here was, was pretty much triggered also when the market hit around 7 plus uh, on May 2013. Then it started to slide down. So this was the drop. I think this was 20 plus percent. Eh? Uh, yeah, 24, 25 percent at that at that particular time. So 20, around 23 plus percent. Uh, this happened from May 2013 all the way to the bottom, uh, January 2014. So it was around six, seven months of of a decline. So satin, you had a decline here, consolidated a bit, then it dropped even more, and now it's testing this level. Uh, one thing I'd like to submit to all of you is this: if the 57 level does not hold, and we see more selling happen. A possible retracement will be here around the 5.3 level. I'll try to zoom in so we have better context. Now, please remember, current movements are pretty much based on support and resistance principles. And then you have another one here at the 4.8 level. If you'd add this, this is something uh, a bit smaller. But the main ones, possible retracement, 5.3, 50. If the 5.7 level does not hold, then you have a smaller one here, 5.1, and then 4.8. So it's quite deep. Uh, should should uh, a deeper retracement happen uh, from here no from here should you see it fall because if you remember here this was a very very steep uh, movement up also so should that fall we could have around another six percent decline ten percent decline and another 14 plus percent decline total should those support levels not hold uh it could go to as low as 45 percent if you follow also the 2008 crash uh, the 2008 crash pretty much was uh, 50 plus percent. And if you'd like to use uh, another tool that you could use, now, for those who attended our Stock Smart sessions, you know, uh, you know that I use Fibonacci in terms of retracements as well. We can reference this 2008 crash uh, to, uh, I don't know, to the to the highest point 2008. So following Fibonacci, what 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 happened today was very significant as well because we broke out from we broke down from the sixty one point eight level. There was a breakdown here. Please remember in the Fibonacci sequence for those who attended our stock smart sessions, you you might have remembered this that sixty one point eight is a very very critical level for uh, for support and resistances. Uh, it's verified also by this last January twenty sixteen. It got hit. Uh, the next retracement level is the 5.3, so sim something similar to what we've plotted. But if this 50 level does not hold, the 38.2 level is around 4.5, so it's a bit it's a bit deep as well. So what I wanted to point out is the 61.8 uh, support level via Fibonacci has been broken. This is invoking a 5.363 support level uh, via Fibonacci. So uh, I'll keep you updated. I'm not sure how low will this go. What I do know is this. Uh, selling is there, volume is there, um, all indicators are showing you that it's still relatively bearish. If you are a position trader, uh, the best course of action still is uh, to act and stay in cash. If you are an investor also, uh, just stay the course, follow your plan in terms of valuations, follow your plan in terms of how you're buying, follow your plan. If if you're if you're into dividends and you think the dividend yield is already attractive enough for you or if you're into uh, long-term investing and valuations wise you think it's cheap already for you uh, follow what your triggers are however you just have to put it at the back of your head that at this point in time since it's bearish there must be a there could be a potential still that the market could slide down still as of this point in time so uh, support levels via fibonacci 5363 4500 then you have 34 then you can just go back to this video for the for the support lines that i've mentioned uh, from the previous uh, videos as well so i'm going to i'm going to make another video and just just rest assured that i'm going to continue to uh, update you while this is going on i'm just going to share as much 
thoughts as I can. And I hope that this this somehow gives you a level of comfort. This somehow gives you also a level of certainty that you do not act based on emotion, but you get to act based on the numbers. You get to follow your financial plan. You get to follow your trading plan as well because the last thing that you would want to do is just to sell because you're getting scared of what's happening. So I guess that's it. Uh, we're at the 15-minute mark. I just would like to know if you guys are still enjoying this, that even if the market is down, you're still uh, willing to learn more about the markets as well. So I guess that's it. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.